Imagine this, you are the 23rd best player in your state, you are the 128th best player in your recruiting class, and you only have two FBS offers to MAC level schools. The odds that you ever make it to the NFL are slim. Now let's say you change to wide receiver. There's even more talent, there's even more competition at this spot. The odds of you ever making it to the NFL from a tiny school are very slim. We see it happen every once in a while. There's a player from a smaller school who becomes a huge name, and the biggest example of that is Corey Davis. Corey Davis was a guy who was an absolute star for P.J. Fleck at Western Michigan and helped the Western Michigan Broncos become the Cinderella team of the 2016 college football season. But I'm not talking about Corey Davis, I'm talking about Dwayne Eskridge. Eskridge was most recently taken in the second round by the Seattle Seahawks, and his story to get to the NFL is pretty incredible. Once again, he was barely top 30 in his state. He was the 128th best player at his position in his recruiting class, and he only had two FBS offers coming out of high school, so the fact that this guy went in the second round of the 2021 NFL Draft is pretty incredible, and today we're going to tell his story. So yeah, Dwayne Eskridge is a guy who was just recently taken in the second round of the 2021 NFL Draft, and today we're going to tell his story and how he went from basically a two-star recruit to a second round NFL Draft pick. But before we get into that, please be sure to hit that subscribe button if you love college football content. Hit that like button if you want more Seahawks or college football fans to be able to see today's video. Suggest what player from the 2021 NFL Draft class I should do next. And turn on post notifications so you never miss when I upload. Now let's tell the incredible story of Dwayne Eskridge. To truly understand how Dwayne Eskridge got to this point, we need to go back to his roots. He was born in Winona, Mississippi, which is a town of about 5,000 people. But at a young age, he'd moved to Bluffton, Indiana. I'm someone who is from Indiana, so I'm very familiar with all the cities and towns in the state, but I have not heard a lot about Bluffton. It's near the city of Fort Wayne, and it has about 10,000 people, and is definitely not known for producing NFL players. By the time he got to Bluffton High School, he was one of the best athletes in the area, and an absolute blazing player. While at Bluffton, he became a prolific running back, as he'd break the school record for career touchdowns and became a three-star prospect. He was also a three-time state champion sprinter, and he won the 200-meter dash twice, and he even won the 100-meter dash as a senior, and was named Indiana's Mr. Track and Field. So the guy was obviously a good running back and a very fast player, so you'd assume he'd have probably some Power 5 offers, right? Well, he did not. He only had two offers, from Western Michigan and from Ball State. Ball State's a school that's pretty close, and Western Michigan is obviously in the state north, and both of those schools are in the MAC conference. So why exactly was he not being recruited? At only 5'8", he was shorter, he didn't play for a pretty big high school, and it's not like his numbers were so good that he was automatically considered one of the better running backs in the nation. In fact, he was the 128th running back in the nation. According to 24-7 Sports, he was a 3-star recruit, the 1,541st best player, and the number 30 all-purpose back in the country. But don't let that confuse you, he was 128th in the country in terms of all running backs combined. The odds he would ever make it were very slim. At the time, the Western Michigan Broncos were under head coach P.J. Fleck, and they were coming off an 8-5 season in which they had won the Bahamas Bowl. Instead of staying at his position of running back, he decided to switch to slot receiver, and it would basically pay off immediately for him. In his first career game against Northwestern, he'd catch two passes for 20 yards and a touchdown. In case you didn't know, Western Michigan would go on to win this game on the road at Northwestern. This would be the beginning of the miracle 2016 season. Alongside his teammate Corey Davis... And little did they know that Eskridge was the next man up. Unfortunately, he didn't have a super season as he was young and only a freshman as he got 17 passes for 121 yards and one touchdown, and his first score obviously came in their first game. He didn't play in their bowl game against Auburn, but he did get to experience the miracle season that happened in Kalamazoo. Going into 2017, Corey Davis was gone, so many expected Eskridge's role to step up, and he did. The Broncos would play against two Power 5 schools in Michigan State and USC, and in those games he only catch 5 combined passes for about 50 yards. His best game would come against Akron as he caught 7 passes for 93 yards and a touchdown, and he would finish the 2017 season with 30 catches for 506 yards and 3 touchdowns. In 2018, he'd once again have a bigger role, and he'd play against a couple more Power 5 schools. In his first game against Syracuse, he put the world on notice as he had 8 catches for 240 yards and 2 touchdowns, but unfortunately they lost 55-42 to to the Syracuse Orange. And little did they know, Syracuse would go on to have their Miracle Cinderella season in 2018 as well. The following week, they go on the road to the Big House, where they lose to the Wolverines 49-3, and he only caught 2 passes for 20 yards. 
He'd have another really good game against Miami of Ohio, as he had seven catches for 141 yards in that game as well, and then he finished the regular season with six catches for 123 yards against Northern Illinois. They'd go in their bowl game where they'd play against BYU, and they lost 49-18, but he'd have two catches for 61 yards in that game. At that point, he was probably the best wide receiver on the team, as he caught 36 passes for 715 yards and three touchdowns. Yeah, he was a pretty solid player for the MAC level, and definitely someone who could potentially break some records at Western Michigan when it's all said and done. But was he on the NFL radar? No, not at all. And honestly, it wasn't even close. But before we can talk about how this guy became an NFL prospect, we have to talk about what happened to the Western Michigan program. Going into the 2018 season, P.J. Fleck had now taken the job at Minnesota, and they'd have to find a new guy, and they hired Tim Lester to be the new head man. At the same time, Eskridge was also a guy who wanted to play on both sides of the ball, as he played slot receiver on offense, and he played as a defensive back on defense, and this is what would ultimately hurt his career. And this is what would ultimately kind of hurt his 2019 season. At this point, he was a senior, and by week three, he was done for the year after he had broken his collarbone against Michigan State, and it looked like his hopes of ever playing in the NFL, or even finishing out his senior year were done. Thankfully though, this would actually be a blessing in disguise for the senior, as he would sit out the rest of the year, and he'd have one more season to compete in 2020. The Mac would end up playing football, and this would be an absolutely monster season for Dwayne Eskridge. In his first game against Akron, he caught three passes for 114 yards and two touchdowns, and he was already off to a great start. Against Toledo, he had seven catches for 131 yards and a touchdown, and then against Central Michigan, he absolutely blew up as he had four catches for 212 yards and three touchdowns against the Chippewas, and at this point, the Western Michigan Broncos were 3-0. He wouldn't stop there though, as against Northern Illinois, he'd have seven catches for 134 yards in that game, and unfortunately in their first loss of the season to Eastern Michigan, he would still have a pretty good game with four catches for 69 yards, but they'd have a chance to play the eventual MAC champions in Ball State. They'd lose that game 30-27, to but he'd go out with a bang as he caught 9 passes for 124 yards and 1 touchdown in that one. And Dwayne Eskridge had a fantastic redshirt senior year and put his name on the radar. He had 34 catches for 784 yards and 8 touchdowns, and this was only in 6 games. Dwayne Eskridge had become a household name to MAC football fans alike, but he was still unknown to the actual college football world. He'd go off at his pro day, and by NFL standards, he was considered fast, which is definitely a compliment. On his pro day, he ran a 4.38 in front of 29 NFL scouts. He said, quote, I wanted to run a 4.29 today, but the weather was a little cooler, and it just wasn't my day for the 4.29, but I feel like a 4.29 guy for sure. Eskridge was one of two Western Michigan players who were invited to the virtual NFL scouting combine, and this is when Eskridge would blow up after showing his blazing speed. So what did Eskridge have going for him? He had one of the best pro days of any wide receivers in the country. He was the Max Conference Special Team Player of the Year, was a first-team All-Max selection, had five years of experience under his belt, and was a second-team All-American from the Football Writers Association of America. And at this point, his name had started to blow up, and personally, I started hearing about his name in April. He was still low on the radar until the Reese Senior Bowl, though, back in January. But all that combined, his name really didn't start getting known until he was good in the Reese Senior Bowl, which happened back in January. Todd McShay said, quote, Western Michigan wide receiver Dwayne Eskridge is a name to get to know. He's eating some really good defensive backs alive during practice today. He's a potential top 50 pick in another loaded wide receiver class. McShay usually knows what he's talking about, and he was in line to be the next Western Michigan wide receiver drafted. He was seen as a top 50 player, and he'd end up sliding just a little bit as he'd go with the 56th overall pick in the second round to the Seattle Seahawks. Some writers said, quote, he's a big play waiting to happen, and Eskridge will bring a new element to that passing game that already includes DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. Eskridge may be the missing piece to this offense, and I'm super excited to watch him play over the next few years. Eskridge is the kind of player you grow up rooting for, as he was a low recruit. So to quickly recap how Dwayne Eskridge got to this point, and how he practically had a 0% chance of making it this far. He was basically a two-star recruit. He was the 130th best running back in his class. He only had two FBS offers to small schools. He switched to a position with even more competition and talent, he overcame a bad collarbone injury, and played for a small school, and would still manage to become a second round pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, and his story is just inspiring for all the guys who are under recruited, and all the guys who suffer injuries, and just for anyone who wants to make it in life. I'm really pumped to watch Dwayne Eskridge play in the next few years, as I really love following players from the state of Indiana because that's where I'm from. What do you guys think though? How will Dwayne Eskridge perform with the Seahawks, who's another rookie with a great story? And what player in college right now do you think this could happen to next? Be sure to let me know down in the comment section. Hit that like button if you want to support today's video. Subscribe if you love football content. And be sure to check out all my other videos on the end screen. 
But until next time, peace. Peace.